why morally be good? So the only reason you're doing something good is not for the benefit of that other person, but to appease this, the indomitable despot that you imagine is watching every movement you make. We grow up and begin to understand from mommy and daddy and our teachers. Does it make more sense if there's a creative mind no. behind it all? No. I, I, th I think a big part, obviously, of digging through whether God exists is the experiential side and the evidential. And, and I think it's, it's experiential and evidential to ask the question, why morally be good? And from an atheistic perspective, I'd want Aaron to try and give me the best sell he can from an atheistic perspective on why I should say live for altruism, human rights, why I should sacrifice my own personal pleasures to go on this missions trip that's an atheistic secular missions trip. Or, you know, from, or from a Christian perspective, why would I do those kinds of things and which one makes more sense? If, if you were, I understand that if you're Christian, then somehow you have the false idea that you're earning brownie points from your God. And so the only reason you're doing something good is not for the benefit of that other person, but to appease this, the indomitable despot that you imagine is watching every movement you make and who will come down on you badly if you don't do exactly what you're told. Of course, that doesn't explain the prison population, does it? It doesn't explain why there are so many people, there's so many people in prison, you know, was it 98% of violent criminals are all deeply religious? And this goes for child molesters too. The more deeply religious they are, the more uh, they the more and younger victims they tend to have. And the funny thing about that is that all of these religious believers believe that, that God is on their side, that God fully understands why they did whatever they did to whoever they did, because that that sucker deserved it anyway. And and if they could just get the death penalty and get out of this prison sentence, well, then they'd be with God and God would reward them for whatever the fuck they did that God's already forgiven them for. And they're going to use that as a legal defense. God's already forgiven me, so I don't have to go to prison. So all, all that bullshit aside. Now, if you're an atheist, as I said, if, you, if, you, if you're a humanist, if you're a Satanist, then you, then you believe in people, you believe in humanity, you believe in, in society. You understand that there's there's little benefit in being selfish. What the hell you get out of that? Now, there have been philosophical arguments that anything we do good is actually for selfish reasons. That if we go to benefit somebody else, we do get an endorphin rise. If, you, if I go out of my way and sacrifice of myself monetarily or physically or whatever, and I save some other person, however trivially or even temporarily I do, there's still some degree of reward that I feel for having done something for someone. Where if, whereas if you want to do absolutely fuck nothing for somebody and pretend like you did something, just nod your head and said, I'll pray for you and then don't do a damn thing because that's what that means. But rather than literally wishing on a star, if you actually do something to help somebody, then you're actually, you're doing something and it's real and you're getting the, 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 the rush from that. So even if it ultimately fails, you've got the satisfaction in having at least tried. And I'm only talking about the completely selfish perspective. I'm not talking about from the rest of society and how they view you. The person who did something, because ultimately, whether there was a God or not, history will be our judge in either case. It what happens in, in our, it, how we are remembered is is what ultimately matters. Seriously, and even if we're not remembered very long, it doesn't matter. So, I would say that's another piece, though. Just like Steve Jobs talked about when he was an atheist, he was kind of a Buddhist atheist. But then on his deathbed, he said, you know what? I think that all this experience, these relationships that I've accumulated and all the work I've done, it does not feel nor make sense logically to me now in my final couple of years that all that would just totally go away with the click of a mouse. When you said we get our morality from society, mm -hmm. are you simply talking about we grow up and begin to understand from mommy and daddy and our teachers? Or are you saying no. we get objective morality? from our, whether you call it objective or not, from society, and that is right or wrong based off of what society says. Universally, in every society that we live in, because we have multiple, but if you compare them all, I, I, I like to refer to, to Scott Clifton's argument on uh, a treatise on morality, where we all understand that, you know, that, that it would be immoral 
to unnecessarily cause harm or suffering to another person. We all get that. Now, for people for political biases or religious biases, we'll come up with excuses for how they're justified in doing the thing that they know is immoral in the first place. And that's why they're desperately coming up with excuses to justify that. But if you really are moral, then you're not looking for these excuses and you're not trying to cause this uh, this this pain and suffering on another person anyway. So when you say society, mm-hmm. I, I mean, the global obviously society. our society has gone astray many times. Right. But I'm not talking about many times. I'm talking about good. specific societies. I'm talking about all of us, the whole planet, everybody collectively. We all understand everybody, everywhere, anytime, any place understands that if you walk up to some little old lady and punch her in the face that's wrong now you can come up with excuses to justify why you did that but we all understand everybody everywhere every when understands that's wrong agreed and i would say that favors that that definitely point, favors on one point of evidence for Thank god that demonstrates how society understands morality from a societal standpoint and not from a god. Thank so, you. So, and how do you explain the audience? How do you explain the recent woman who, you know, she's a writer for the Boston Globe, strong atheist. She went down and was trying to help eradicate in a certain tribe honor killings. They thought honor killings were fine. Isn't As that I said, individual groups will find political or religious reasons to justify the evil that they know that they're doing. You and I can both come up with exceptions of how of the excuses that people have written into their dogma to justify the evil that they're doing. We can do so, that all day. But yet again, talking- though, this gets back to the same thing I'm trying to hammer home here with reason, logic, math and add morality to it. Mm hmm. Does it make more sense if there's a creative mind no. behind it all? No. Or does it make just total sense that it's completely random? You know, the, all this creativity and beauty came from entropy and also, chaos. Also, no. A blind, it's pitiless not completely random, existence. It's not, just because it wasn't predetermined, because someone didn't have a plan and we're not important, that, that, that the universe wasn't created for us, and will end when we do. It was it, that, that we are the reason the universe exists in our humility. Just because that isn't the case doesn't mean it's completely random because there are processes here that make it not completely random. I would say normally deterministic, but I, you know, some philosopher always wants to redefine things in a, in a damning way. And they say that you know, deterministic, that, 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 uh, that would mean that there's no other way that can happen. But what I'm only talking about that there are processes that guide it to this probability over this other probability. But it's not completely random is the point. So I realize that religious believers have this weird fixation, which I've never understood. I really can't even relate to it at all, where they want there to be a reason for existence and a meaning and purpose for life. 